Jehovah, we thank you for your glorious presence that is with us tonight. We thank you that these days where we are spending time in your presence, seeking you through prayer and fasting, as we commence tonight, we thank you that you are commencing with us. We thank you for a release of your anointing to be game changers and to be change makers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that everybody that is part of Gethsemane 2019 receives of this anointing and of this grace to be a game changer. And to be a change maker, whatever you have planted them, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare in Jesus' name that Father, as we spend time in your presence, your wholeness and your fullness will wrap off us in the name of Jesus. We stop every plan of Satan in the name of Jesus. We oppose every agenda of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We steal the mark of every foe and of every avenger in the name of Jesus. We come against the workings of witchcraft, diviners and enchanters in the name of Jesus. And we declare, let the heavens be open. And may the people of God experience none but God only. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In this place, let there be healings. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. Let there be healings. Amen. Let there be demonstration of your power. Amen. Let deliverances abound. Amen. Let giftings be released. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let there be a stirring up of the abilities of God in the lives of God's people. Amen. We give you praise. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, we have set ourselves an interesting theme for the year where we are saying that through discipleship, we want to be game changers and we want to be change makers. I ask myself a simple thing. Why are we combining the two? Because even one would have been enough. It would just have been enough to be a game changer. But we equally want to be change makers. Hello? Hi. And it is 
is not out of place. God will give both anointing to us. Hallelujah. Amen. As we spend time at Gethsemane, God will release both anointings to be game changers and to be change makers. He would give it to us. Amen. And so that is one of the things that I want you to be prepared for that God is going to do. Hallelujah. Hello? Jesus says that you are the light of this world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. It means that when the seed of Christ comes into you, if you like, try hiding. You will not be successful hiding. Because a city that is set on a hill, no matter what you do, it cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, I want you to have this mindset as we, 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 we delve into God's word to experience God. Looking through the scriptures, I realized that all throughout, from the beginning of the scriptures to the end, Almost everybody who had an encounter with God was a change maker and was a game changer. Everybody. Obi Biara, Oli Nyankupon, Edin Sawa Sobiya, Oli Nyasemi. Nyame Adumbi Wadeswa, Oti Mini Sachra Nyoma. Obi Biara. Because that is who God is. In the beginning when God showed up on the scene and God said, let there be light. The Bible says that the background was that there was darkness on the face of the earth and the earth was without form. But when God appeared, he carried the ability to bring a change. So when God said, let there be light, change occurred. Hallelujah. So we are talking about a grace of God, an ability of God, such that when you appear on the scene, there will be a turnaround in whatever situation you are involved in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I know it is in the evening, but you are not permitted to sleep. <laughs> when I see you sleeping, I might walk to you and give you the microphone to continue the sermon. <laughs> so make sure I don't see you sleeping. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want to speak to you from the book of Daniel, chapter 3. The book of Daniel, chapter 3. It's a story we know quite well. The Bible says that there was this powerful king of this world, that the king was so powerful near Osie and Aeo. Onyakasa, Ubiyan to be So one day, this king, decided that he will build an image. And that image, whenever there was a sounding of an alarm through trumpets and through all other musical instruments, everybody in his kingdom was supposed to bow to this particular image. And the punishment was that if you refused or if you fail to bow to this image, you are supposed to be put in a hot furnace. Mm -hmm. So, it, it was enough to scare anybody to say that when you heard a trumpet, even in your dreams, <laughs> your dream will, will tell you that if you don't stop dreaming and bow down, you will end up in the hot furnace. 
And so you will interrupt your dream and bow. And afterwards, get up and rest. Hello? So such was the rule. And it became a law. The governors and everybody was bound. But then the Bible says that in the province of Babylon, in that province, there were three men by the name Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, they were Jews who were taken captive and brought into the kingdom of King Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible has said that some Chaldeans, other version says astrologers, people who read the stars, went to Nebuchadnezzar and told him that there are some men in this kingdom. And Rana was a woman so. And Nebuchadnezzar ordered for the men to be brought before him. When these three men came before Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar said, you know what? This is what has been told me. But I presume that these astrologers don't like me. That's why they brought you here. Mm -hmm. So, shame them. <coughs> when we blow the trumpet, mm -hmm. when we just blow the trumpet, you shame them. Because I believe you people. I know your senior brother Daniel. Mm -hmm. A while back, he had interpreted a dream. Mm -hmm. So yes, put them to shame. But when you look again, hello. Hi. I'm sure he would have sung Esther Smith. Maona wata no 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 no. Erade maona no. Maona wata no no no. Erade ma. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, my one and one, and one and one, my one and one, and one and one, and one and one. The three men just came, and they said, King, may you live long. Tell your neighbor, may you live long. I think it's a proper greeting. It's a, it's a very good greeting. At, at, at this time, uh, when you wake up in the morning, when somebody greets you, and you look at the person, you say, may you live long. Hmm? May you live long. Hallelujah. Kid, may you live long. Listen. What you heard is true. Hmm? What you heard is true. And the reason why we will not bow is that we believe in a certain God. We, we believe in a certain God. We are aware that we are servants in your kingdom. We are aware that we are Jews. We don't come from here. We are aware that we don't have our source here. We are aware. But we believe in a certain God. And we want to add on further that this God, we believe, can save us. Amen. But just in case, because we have migrated from Israel all the way into captivity, just in case the God that we know, the God that we believe in, just in case he was not giving a visa to travel along with us from Israel into captivity, so he is unable to save us. We still want to tell you that we still love <laughs> Hello. Hi. This one, I don't know whether I should call it stubbornness or foolhardiness. Positive defiance. To the highest order. What's the idea?
The Bible says that when the queen of Sheba heard that Solomon had been anointed king of Israel, she journeyed all the way and she came to test him with hard questions. Hello? Hi. So when you ask for God to anoint you, God to empower you, mm -hmm. God to uh, uh, bring a grace upon your life, people will journey. When they tell you, they come to test you with hard questions. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God that the essence of this camp is not to put fear in you, but to activate what it takes hmm, to be a game changer and to be a change maker. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So the gentleman. The trumpets were blown. They didn't bow. <coughs> Hello? The young men didn't bow. <coughs> and the king instructed, you know what? Me, nobody disobeys my word. I said that they'll go into the hot furnace. Make the furnace seven times water. Hello? Uh, seven times water. In the scriptures, when you hear seven times, okay, that is the highest okay, of punishment. The Bible says that when a thief is caught, he shall be made to pay sevenfold. That is the highest form of compensation that you can ever get. And so seven times water is the highest form of punishment. You can never get it. So he heated the furnace seven times hotter than the original heat. And then he didn't ask the men to walk into the fire. He called strong men in his army. Not just any other person. Strong men in his army. They bound these men. Three of them. And carried them to the fence. And the Bible records that these strong men who bound them, before they got to the fence, they got bent. Hello? Hi. But Nebuchadnezzar was not persistent. He so said, put them in the fence. And he put them in the fence. And the Bible says that immediately he woke up from the sea. After they arriving in the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar woke up from his and he said that, mm, mm, bring me my glasses. I need to see well. They brought the glasses to work and said, how many people did you put in this furnace? He says, three. Are you sure? Are you sure there was no fourth person? Okay. I see four people. Hallelujah. I see four people. And the fourth personality is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. There is a fourth personality in the furnace. Something blows my mind a bit. What blows my mind is the fact that if you've ever gotten close to a furnace, okay, a 
time it is hot, hmm, it blasts visibility. If there is something that you can't see it clearly,
But when we meet like this, what God does is to activate that ability. And then you are able to put it to use. Hallelujah. So how do we activate this ability? How could, they, how could Joseph resist the pressures from Mrs. Potiphar? Hmm? How? How was he able to do it? You are a slave in Wonderland. And your, your master believes so much in you. He has handed over everything to you except his wife. Hmm? And you don't go chasing after the wife. But the wife who is not under your control. Hmm? The elements that have been given to him. The wife who is not under Joseph's control now begins to pursue Joseph. And says that everything is under you, so me too, I want to be under you. <laughs> I want to be under you. And the Bible says that she persisted day after day, going after Joseph. I want to be under you. Everything is under you. My husband's giving you. Just take me and I just want to be under you. Hello? I want to be under you. Oh, the handsome Joseph. When I see your broad chest, I want to be under you. I want to be under you. The Bible says she persisted day after day. But Joseph will not get it. Then one day, she decided that enough of talk. I've got to put action to my words. Hello? And she arranged up that there was nobody at home at that time. And he said, Joseph, this is a fine commemoration day of my subjectivity. I want to be under him. Rule over me. And the Bible said that he held on, she held on to Joseph. And Joseph let him go. Hello? Hi. Let him go. And he ran out of the house. Hello? Hi. He ran out of the house naked. So sometimes, in our quest to be game changers, it will require that we must step out naked. Yes. We must step out naked. And when you are going out, you leave the only evidence in the hand of a woman. And that woman is your master's mistress. What defense can get you out of trouble? Nothing. Hello? Hi. Nothing can get you out of trouble. And Joseph knew this, but he still left his garment in Mrs. Potiphar's hands. Hello? Hi. Nani Boni Kurani said. Nini Yani Kurakao. So, what's the big deal? I'm sure if it were, if, if, if it were you now, and pay me a cow, but what would Any accomplice with your bear come? Now, the high part. This one said, if you have a boy, you have a woman, 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 you see, they have the phone room paying in one to our. <laughs> Hello? And that's how most Christians think. And we give a lot of credit to the devil. Whenever there is a situation in our life, the first person we are quick to blame is the devil. Most Christians cannot stand. Why? Because they forget that they are supposed to be game changers. You know, sometimes, if you watch football, what you realize is that the players that are game changers, they don't put them in the start of the game. They're always on the bench. Hello? And that's how sometimes rivals. Because you are a game changer, you sit on the bench. You sit on the bench in your office. When you sit on the bench, what it means is that selection and foul. Yeah, sure, we just the selection and foul. When you sit on the bench, what it means is that you know how to play. 
But the 22 players who are on the field, you are not part of them. Hello? Amen. And these things are written to us. And then we pray, we, 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 we say all manner of things in prayer. But how can we make changes? How? I have two pointers just for tonight. The first is that to be able to make any change anywhere in this life, you must know what you need. You must know what you believe. What you believe is so critical. So if you believe the wrong things, you are in trouble. The essence of this camp is to help you believe the right things. The essence of Gethsemane is to help you believe the right things. There's a lot of wrong proclamation that is going on. A lot. But you've got to believe the right thing. What are some of the things that you've got to believe by as a Christian? You must believe that Jesus is Lord. Hello? You must believe that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is not a prayer answering machine. He is Lord. Yes, for your right. Hallelujah. 
And so I have come to this personal conclusion. <laughs> Jesus, the name of Jesus, has territorial advantage in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. Hello. In heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. Jesus' name has territorial advantage in heaven on earth and underneath the earth. In this world that you are, hmm, let me speak again in English. Everything that can do you <laughs> can only do you from the regions. It can only do you from above. It can only do you from within. Or it can only do you from beneath. Hmm? But if you believe that Jesus is Lord, and his name has territorial advantage in heaven's above, on the earth and underneath the earth. What can we do? You? Hmm? Hello. Hi. What can we do? You? I meet Christians and they tell me, "I see the media cut to water beso. Yeah, yeah, the phonia cut to water beso. And the bomb paye, the air can't change the same model." Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Do you know who you are? Huh? Do you know who you are? Obienya drew half of the womb for you. And as you see, my family more rapidly tried, I need to train you, or they could hear you. Hello? Hi. Do you know who you are? That is our problem as Christians. We don't know who we are. You see yourself, you think you are just a small girl. And you think that you have just begun your career. Now, you know what I'm saying? I say, man, I'm crying. No, for a change of my son, I'm going to do And I saw my promotion. And I will say, I'm going to crowd that. Do you know that that man can drop dead the next minute? He can. Hello? Hi. He can drop dead. And do you know that the company can collapse? Yes. Have you thought about it? Mm -hmm. They can collapse. Hello? Uh -huh. Now, if you are looking for staff of Unibank, you won't find them. <laughs> Hello? Uh -huh. You won't find them. I am not interested in what happened that the bank was saying, no, no, that's what I'm, but I'm interested in the point that, or the fact that, Unibank, you to be a lead bank in this country. Mm? But today, it is no more. So, if you sold your destiny to a leader in Unibank, today, they don't have your Hello? Hi. They don't have Hello? Christians are settling for weak things because they don't believe that Jesus is Lord. But he is. So somebody has taken your photograph and has taken it to the altar and they are enchanting against you. And you are scared. Hello? You are what? In the same one now, what are they security? Ten, but hey. I won't buy it. The car said, We have a call at the domain. After you have outreach. And the end is already a month. But you are catching up with some phony. Well, phony. You are saying, And yet, five years ago, you are saying, I was so soon German. For no reason. You know why you are scared? You are scared because you don't know that the Jesus who is in you is Lord. If you knew that Jesus is Lord, it meant that, you see, listen, the enchanter, hmm, he must consult. He himself doesn't have anything. He must consult a spirit. Hmm, for that spirit, to give 
him or her permission to place a spell on you. Hello. And chances are that it might not work. But do you know that the enchanter believes in the spirit they are consulting much more than Christians believe in the God who lives in them? That's where the problem is. Hmm? And his cohorts against any human 
human being who will ever live on the face of the earth, hmm? it is marked onto the written code. Hello? Uh. It is marked onto the written code. They make out yes. And you know, in some other way, we be able to be a little bit be able to be a little bit of 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 a Nani nina swam as I said what sign is happening to you? Anessa or ya in the in the register. Hello? The Bible says that. When we believed in Jesus, you and I, one of the things Jesus did for us, he took that written code. Hmm? He took it. He carried it to the cross and he nailed it. <laughs> Hello? So what it means is that if somebody stands anywhere under the sun and invokes a case against one who believes in Jesus, the written code, the source document, has been taken away. <laughs> did, did, did you get that? Why are some mighty people here? Mm -hmm. The source document. You see, when you issue instruction, for example, when you press your, the remote of your car door, mm -hmm. The reason why the door opens is because there is a code on your motherboard mm, or the control board in the car that each time you press the remote, it sends a signal to the code. And once you press the, the padlock, which is open, it opens. If you press the other one, it closes. Right? Do you know that if I succeed in entering your car and I take the motherboard out and the car is still intact, locked, and you go ahead and stand there mm, and do this. And you even connect the battery to a generator. <laughs> the, the, the remote to a generator and start doing this. It will not work. Why? The source has been taken away. This is what Jesus did for you. He's taking it away. And it is the reason why when you are sick, we can pray for you for you to be well. Because the source has been dealt with. Amen. It has been dealt with. And if you understand this, what else do you need? Hello? Amen. If you understand, what else do you need? It has been dealt. So believe that Jesus is Lord. Hmm? Hello? Amen. Believe also that God exists. Sunday after Sunday, those of us in the Orthodox, before service closes, you be You know how you did it? Then you wake up here in the morning and you ask him for some years as a young lady. Hello? Then you wrap to the tennis go. Hey, whom do you believe in? Not the Father Almighty, the Creator of the Bible, blah, 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 Then you sit down. Hello? But do you truly believe? Do you truly believe? God exists. Last week, I was in a young couple's retreat. And I was ministering there. And before the retreat, I was asking him, what should I talk about? What do you want to put to here? And he says, go and talk about the topic. When God is late. <laughs> Say, I'm your okay, yeah. character. When he's late. I sat down and I laughed. He said, What talk about? He said, What? Why? He says that a lot of Christians, mm -hmm. a lot of Christians, they don't believe me anymore. Because they have been praying, they have not been getting with God. And you think that God is late. Mm -hmm. The reason why some people didn't come for Gethsemane this year is that they didn't come for Gethsemane many years. They have still not encountered God. And it's as if God is late. 
They've been praying, they've been fasting. They've been sowing seed, everything you told them to do, they've done. They've done water fast, they've done dry fast. Everything, they, they, they've done all. But God is still left for them. Hello? So I said, what does that mean? And then he took me to the book of Mark chapter 5. Jairus. He came to besiege Jesus. My daughter is about dying. Hmm? That is when Jesus had just begun his day. And he arrived. My daughter is about dying. Come. Come to my house. I believe you. Come and put your hand on her so that she will be made well. Hello? And they began the journey. They began the journey. People were showing Jesus that right center. They began, they were headed towards Jairus' house. Hello? But there was a certain woman who had been suffering for 12 years. Mm -hmm. She knew that the way she was the Lord did not allow her to mingle with people, much more to book an appointment with Jesus. So the Bible said she talked to herself. She didn't even bother discussing the issue with anybody. She talked to herself. She said that, I am not on God's side tonight. Mm -hmm.
whom God is creating. And this was getting worse by the day. And we're praying by the minute. And God is dead. So if you are here going through any kind of affliction, hmm, don't be afraid. Just believe. Hmm? Stop, stop, stop being afraid. That is the problem. Stop being afraid. Just believe. More often when you read the, the story of Job. We are quick to say that, and God allowed Job to. What? Job's problem was brought on him by his own self. By his own self. Read the book of Job chapter. Job sat there and said that what I greatly fear has come upon me. So what it meant was that in chapter one, chapter two, according for the one and all man, he was afraid. It was not done out of faith. It was done out of fear. What are you doing out of fear? If you came here to this get seven this year because you are afraid of something, drop it here. Drop it. You have come here to seek God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Time is taking away. Let's, 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 let's carry up with God. So I said, believe that Jesus is God. Believe that God exists. And that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Believe God's word. 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 The word of God. God has sworn by himself and has spoken. Hello. Believe God's word. This word that we are speaking to you, Ed. Do you know what it means? It means that when the word is spoken, the integrity of God is at stake. When we preach the word, like I'm preaching to you, and I'm telling you, believe. Because that's what the word of God says that don't be afraid, just believe. Believe his word. Hmm? And you are believing his word. We are committing God. His integrity is at stake. Hallelujah. So believe God's word. Stop believing the statement of men. People believe the statement that heaven helps those who help themselves. You know it's not the Bible. Heaven, help those who love themselves. Hello? And so when we pray, we pray nice prayers. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. But the Bible says that the comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Where is the Holy Spirit? Where is he? I'm going to go for Oh, me too. Or what? Or do you move? It means that your help is resident in the inside. Hmm? Your help is resident in the inside. So you are not helpless. Don't pray like a helpless person. And then I tell you, do what you do. Open up, what you Alright, you're coming to you. Alright, you're coming to you. I'm commenting on the past in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? So I have already. That is what the word of God says. The word of God says the greater one lives in you. The mightier one lives in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is God who is in you than inflation of Ghana. Yes. Hello? Hi. Inflation is a very critical thing. If you work in the corporate setting, your salary increase depends on it. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hi. If it is high, it is favorable. <laughs> because then you might get 25%. But I just have 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. Hello? Hi. But the greater one lives in you. There is a God who is in the inside of us who is bigger than inflation. Who is bigger than the economy of Ghana? Hello? Hi. One of the graces God will give us as we live in Germany is that He will empower most of us to own our own businesses. He will, empower, he will empower most of us to own our own businesses. Because you see, there is a lot of rot and a lot of nonsense in 
in the whole structure that has been built up, that people are working and drawing salary, there's a lot of wrong. That is why God will give you the opportunity to own your own business. Amen. To change the narrative. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have some German here. Where? Well, show me your heart. Some of Prof. Naya. Prof. Naya. Some of them. Who didn't say no man in here? I said, yes, no man won't see. You know? Yes. And so because of that, we are unable to increase salaries below the revolutionary rate. And so if you got a four and your appraisal is the highest, you will get a 10%. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you got a one, which is the least, you will get a new increase. If you got a two, you will get a 3%. If you got a three, you get a 5%. And we, we have talked through this and we, we, we looked at the economy and uh, we are trusting that by media, we need to do some new things. I Hello. Hi. 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 And you know the sad thing? When they push you to come and tell this thing to the general staff, no one will be here, no one will be Hello. The whole system runs on disease. <coughs> That is why God needs game changers and change makers. You see, the reason why God wants you to enter into politics is not so that you drive a V8, but so that you will change the narrative. You will change the narrative. Ghana is not poor. We have a problem with leadership. Hello? We have a problem with leadership. But we are praying. And one of the things we are establishing in the realms of the spirit, Uba, now we here, and we see Uba. Yes. You will see Uba. Hello? Because God did not plant us in this land for us to struggle. He didn't do that. We have everything yet we are poor. And it's as if politicians want the citizens just to continue to be poor so that they can and then next election in the never catch the world. You must follow the path. So they come out. Hello. And if you go out now, sometimes the game changer is a matchbox with the pieces. That, that's the game changer. And it is pitiful that people who lift up their hands to God and call on the name of the Lord, we exploit our own like this. Change is coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So believe the word of God. Believe that as you have come here, you will be blessed. The Bible said, No one comes into the presence of the Lord and goes back. They say, Believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe it. Believe that they that wait upon the Lord shall be strong. Yes. They shall renew their strength. Believe it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Believe that when you bring your marriage to the presence of God and God blesses your marriage, God has come into your marriage. Stop listening to the false that are. Yes. I saw on social media a video, somebody criticizing the church. He says it's a pastor criticizing the church that the church is destroying marriages. And if the church is the reason why people are not married and they are committing uh, fornication. And the simple reason is that because of the institution of wedding that the church has brought. So people uh, don't have what it takes to, to organize weddings and because of that they, they are committing fornication. It's a pastor. Hello? Why is it written in the Bible that you need 10,000 to do it? Why is it written? Hello? The poor people, it's, it's your problem. <laughs> it is your problem. Hmm? Have you found a wife? A boss of you is there. Meet Papa, meet him in the office. Hmm? Meet him in the office. All it takes is that the building should be licensed to fulfill the legal.
down, ask her. Meet him in the office. You and your wife are in t shirt <laughs> Don't wear a gown. In t shirt okay? And come and receive a blessing. That is what is required. Because at the end of the friend, I was there. Yes, she now cried in the age now. Yes, she now cried in the age now. See, she has some of it. Yes, she now cried in the age now. There's another one. Near the door. Hello? So stop listening to people and believe God's word. When God says, the let the witch say, I am strong. You must say it. Sarah and Yamia Savoka. Hallelujah. And do to our top because of you. Let the wings say I am strong. I want to hear you. Let the wings say I am strong. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When believing or belief is absent, doubts and fear are present. So anytime you fail to believe, you promote fear. So what I need here, what I who any I need me who find a manifold. Hello. And wherever there is fear, God can do nothing. Hello. God can do nothing. If you read the book of Mark chapter six, the Bible says that Jesus went to his own town, but because of the unbelief of the people, he couldn't. He couldn't perform a miracle. Do you know what that means? It means that Jesus will call somebody who is blind, trying to heal the person and touch the person's eye. The eyes that he will He touched the eye that he will He tried the eye and he the eye that For what? <laughs> it's in the scriptures. And you know the reason that was assigned to Because of his own belief. Okay. Hello? It means that the opposite is true, like my economics lecturer told you. If unbelief promotes non-performance, then belief promotes performance. So each time you believe, you set in motion a set of principles that will perform for you. Do you know that if you are going to write an exam, no matter how much work you have learned, if you don't believe that you pass, you fail. Do you know that? Even if you were the one who said the question, you fail. <laughs> Because you don't believe that you will pass. Hello? Uh, and let me tell you this. There are two personalities under heaven to whom all things are possible. The Bible says that with God, all things are possible. And the Bible also says that all things are possible to the one who believes. To the one who believes. So if you believe, everything is possible. Amen. If you believe, you might be 60, but you can still have a child. Amen. Hello? Amen. If you believe, hmm, you might be sacked from work, but you can still make it in life. Amen. Just believe. Hello? Amen. To be a game changer, you must believe. Hello? Amen. And don't stop believing. When somebody gives you a reason to stop believing, don't stop believing. Hallelujah. Amen. My last point, and I'll be done for the evening. To be a game changer, you must be conscious of God's ability within you. And so when you to say, Hello? And so when you to say, Consciousness. We are seated here tonight. Because we want you to grab that consciousness. Yeah, but see what you Hello? Be conscious. A lot of Christians walk not conscious of who they are. Hello? Aye. We're having a discussion about two weeks ago. And I was told that now. As far as gender is concerned, there are males, there are females, there are uh, transgender, there are uh, homosexuals, there are lesbians, and there are bisexuals. So that's the LGBT, and there's another one, you know, 
call on him now. Hello? How? That is not the time to eradicate you, 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 eradicate you. Because it is not that they are ready to which is which is bad. But they know a shop of the moon is not that they are ready to be a good one. They are not going to be a good one. Hello? That is the time if you know how to pray in tongues. You've got to pray in tongues. Zababa has to be. Livari Kaba has to be. Levebrianta Akiba Antilibi has to be. Levranti. A cachou que fez prédia. O patrão está cá no nosso corpo. Mas o nome está cá. Está bem? Ei! Thank you. 
Holy Spirit came. And he appeared before the sun. And he told him, from today to go, make sure when you get up, you don't speak in the name Jesus again. Peter said, by the way of He says, that I must so much remind you. Today are not conscious of who we are supposed to be. We want to join the nice cities. But beloved, you are a Christian. The Holy Spirit is in you. He is there. Hmm? He is there. Everything you ever need for life and godliness, God has given to you. Be conscious of that. You are too conscious that you will be poor. It worries me. It worries me, man. That we are too conscious that we will be poor. We are not conscious that we are rich. And so, if I stand here and I say, You will make it! You say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. You will prosper! I receive it in the name of Jesus. But did you know that prosperity is already in you? Hmm? Making it is already in you. So when I stand here and I say, you will make it. All I'm trying to do is to activate that ability. Hello? It is not when I say that you will make it, that the spirit of making it comes from you. No, it is already there. Hello? It's already there. All of you are sitting here. I'm not going to be a good one. 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 So if you are here and you are sick in any part of your body and you are praying, don't pray and tell God, God, heal me. God, heal me. God, heal me. Rather pray and say, I activate the healing power of God in my life. Against any cell of disease. Against any cell of sickness. That is how heaven wants to hear us pray. Hmm? When there is no money in your pocket, don't wait for you to go moneyless before you start praying. Oh God, I need a breakthrough. Oh God, I need a breakthrough. Hmm? Whilst you are in your home, be conscious and of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. When Jesus was asked to pay tax, he didn't have money, but he had the Holy Spirit in the inside of him. The Holy Spirit ministered to him. He said that the amount of money that you need to pay the tax to pay for yourself and the disciple is in the mouth of the fish. And this fish, you don't need a net. You need another hour. <laughs> One one took our for city boys and girls in the work. The work for the proper is it? Who? Who can lie? This is the work for. Next time they can pray for that one. And finally, 
enche nam no fadawa na oto dawa no enam obi nu edi kan in the room there is more money there for you to pay your tax than the tax of the tax yeah. you know what that tells me what that tells me is that the money i want is for somebody yeah. if I, if only i am conscious eh? if only i am conscious one pastor told the story in america they were looking for money to buy a property and the church only had so much funds there was a deadline and then he went to make a deposit and told the landlord that the baby to ya and then the landlord gave them i think about two weeks hello they didn't know where the money was going to come from they actually didn't have the money for fair down payment and the landlord told them that a down road anyone and for for grab at the cash about but i am one way sorry and i'm meet you with them and i remember my preference musi to me sir to me my first cousin was also hello also for me sir then i feel one sir to me sir i feel the same kind of thing oh yes kind that means that if you get two weeks a year is supposed to come they are supposed to get a year's offer it is still not enough to pay for the property and they prayed and God told them to give them the property the way sometimes God is when you pray in speech when you speak sometimes I think God forget that we live on earth <laughs> because the things he says he says I will give you the property hmm? forgetting that property they regret the message <laughs> and he kept emphasizing his word each time he prayed that he would give them the property and the two weeks was taken, was taken, was taken, was taken, was taken. The last day of the two weeks, the man gave them 12 noon. That was supposed to bring the man all the time he last, and they handed over the money and ejected from the property. So to be great, sit at the time I'll talk about it. Hello? Hello? Hi. And the pastor was in his office praying. Going up and down, looking at the clock. Going up and down, looking at the clock. Going up and down, looking at the clock. It was 11 o'clock. Going up and down, looking at the clock. 11.30. Going up and down, looking at the clock. 11.45. Going up and down, looking at the clock. 11.50. All of a sudden, he had a prompting to look through his window. When he looked through his window, he saw a lot of people walking. A lot of people walking. walking. <laughs> He said a lot of people okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yet, when you look through the window, of all the many people that were walking, okay, holding back, he saw one of them. And he got down from the top of his office. He said, run to the man. The man was holding back. He said, give it to me. And he took the back. Came back, ran to where the landlord was. He counted the money that was in the bag. Exactly the amount of money. You know what your problem is? You are too gentle. <laughs> Hello? That, that's what your problem is. What camera for you? You are too, you are too gentle. Hello? What are they? Jesus wants to creep people out of the place. 
It was the same time. What it means is that when Jesus was preaching the people, that man was dead. Hello? Why didn't Jesus heal him? He left him for Peter. He was there. Because the Bible said that this is a man who had been lame from birth. And he had been sitting there begging. Obey him. Would your compile will share them with him for your rest that day? Hello? And that is what the world gives. The world gives sympathy. 